Hello, I am Sharifa Medford and this is everything you need to know about Exercise Trail Wings 2024. Exercise Trail Wings 2024 is a United States Southern Command sponsored military exercise which is conducted annually in the Caribbean region. The theme for this year's exercise is tailored by the region for the region, promoting a secure Caribbean 2024 and beyond. Now in its 39th year, Trail Winds 2024 is scheduled to be held in Barbados during the period May 4th to 16th and will witness the participation of 26 countries and organizations comprising of military and law enforcement personnel in various aspects of training. The exercise is designed to improve cooperation, interoperability and operational responses between participating nations to common threats to national, regional and hemispheric security. This year, the exercise will also place an emphasis on preparing regional forces for the ICC Cricket World Cup 2024. Exercise Trade Wins has proven to be an extremely beneficial exercise to all participating nations and agencies. It provides a unique platform from which participants with varied training, procedures and cultures can integrate and operate seamlessly in responding to common threats. Trail Wins 2024 will provide an excellent opportunity for greater regional and sub-regional integration, coordination, and networking of the region's security forces. Additionally, it will afford security forces and HADR agencies an opportunity to be exposed to updated techniques in disaster management and mitigation, as well as in counter-narcotics and other aspects of law enforcement. Barbados also stands to benefit from an economic perspective, the U.S. Southcom will inject a significant amount of funds into the local economy to procure goods and services in support of the exercise. There will also be an inflow of approximately 1,000 foreign military and law enforcement personnel from the Caribbean, Latin America, the United Kingdom, Canada and the United States. Joining us today are Commander Mark Peterson, host country lead planner and staff advisor to the Chief of Staff Barbados Defense Force, and Colonel Carrolls, Colonel Charles Carrolls, the coordinator from the United States Southern Command. Gentlemen, welcome and thank you for joining us here today. Good afternoon. Sure. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Okay, now Exercise Trail Wings 24, we have the general overview of the event, but we want to know exactly how it works. So how does the U.S. disseminate its resources, our assets to Barbados, and by extension the Latin American region into their structures and various other mechanisms? I'm going to throw that one to you. Colonel Carls. Okay. So it's a, a challenging operation because you have so many different people, as you talked about, uh, all the different countries that are participating. Uh, but it's the opportunity for us to work together uh, for regional uh, hemispheric cooperation and security. Uh, as you pointed out, um, you know, for this year, the Barbados has uh, in the region have, uh, you know, other aspects that they're trying to train for. But one of the things for this exercise is it's also part of the U.S. large scale global exercise which integrates um, various exercises throughout different combatant commands throughout the world. And so it's not just even focused on this region, uh, but it is also kind of a worldwide operation. For the logistics side of things, we have uh, things coming from multiple ports in the U.S., uh, from Martinique, from Honduras, uh, and then as you pointed out also, a uh, large number of local purchases for the sustainment of all of the forces that are here in the area. So it's a it's kind of a large, wide-ranging uh, event with a bunch of different um, tracts and things that are focuses, including the HADR uh, for humanitarian assistance and disaster response, uh, focus on illegal unregulated fishing, uh, and working on different other common threats to the region uh, and the, threaten the security of the Caribbean. Um, why Barbados? So this is the 39th iteration of uh, Tradewinds. It actually, it's the 40th year, but the 39th iteration. Um, Barbados has actually been a host before. Uh, so this is not the first time that Barbados has hosted Tradewinds. And it rotates through to the key partners and allies within the region. Uh, and this is a great opportunity for us to come and, and work with our, our close nation of Barbados. Good. Okay. Commander Peterson, what are the specific objectives for this year's exercise and the unique benefits to Barbados? Well, Sharifa, as you did mention, um, this year, this is the 40th iteration, the 39th iteration of exercise trainings, the 39th annual exercise. Uh, the only time it was canceled was in 2020. Um, so essentially, we focus on six tracks, as mentioned by Colonel Charles, or Carl's, sorry, um, those being Intergency and Ground, Land, 
uh, maritime disaster response, humanitarian assistance, and cyber this year. Uh, the particular objectives we're looking to, to obtain is to ensure that we can test the various mechanisms in Barbados. So that is a national response either in the HEDR safety realm or in the security realm. At the regional level to ensure partner nations are interoperable um, at the operational level and at the tactical level. And more so at the strategic level to ensure that between um, host nation and the US that we can synergize our actions to ensure that if there's any assistance required um, here or anywhere in the region, that the US or any of our first world partners can deploy into our theaters seamlessly to ensure that whatever operation they need to effect can be done as seamlessly as possible. So those are the main objectives we are looking to achieve um, for this exercise straight wins. But as you did mention in particular, um, this year, as you are aware, come the 1st of June this year, we have a global large scale sporting event, which mm -hmm. is Cricket World Cup um, 2024. Um, so we're using this opportunity to ensure that we can build capacity within Barbados, either within the safety and security realm or within the HADM, the HADR realm, which comes under the safety aspect, but also to ensure that partner nations can also build some capacity to particularly ensure that we can operate seamlessly come the 1st of June to ensure that we have a safe and successful cricket World Cup 2024. Okay. Barbadians um, have been taken to social media and conversations in the public, have been stating that exercise trail events happening around, around the same time as ICC World Cup. Mm -hmm. Um, gives the impression that we have some potential dangers. Um, kind of alleviate their fears as to... Well, what I can say, Sharifa, is that this was strategically done. Uh, when we were approached circa January 2023 uh, to ask if Barbados would host SSI's um, trade in 2024, uh, the government of Barbados approached the Barbados Defense Force, who was the um, executive agent, sorry, uh, and we said, well, yes, we want to host trade wins in 2024. The challenge is that trade wins is normally held in June. And in June, as you are aware, that at the same time as cricket World Cup. So it doesn't make any sense, it did not make any sense at that point in time to push the exercise beyond or to cancel the exercise. So we used it as an opportunity to bring the exercise forward by a few weeks to ensure that, as I did mention, that we can build capacity to ensure that not only Barbados agencies, but also partner nations can seamlessly prepare themselves and walk from exercise trade wings into cricket workup, having honed and sharpened all the skills required for the operation. Okay. Given, given primary dif differences between the U.S. and Barbados at the national level, respectively, what is the strategic utility of exercise trade wings 2024? I'm going to put this question to both of you. Okay, so... Um, you know, Mark did a great job of, of articulating both the tactical, the operational, and the strategic. Uh, but the strategic value is, you know, it enhances the interoperability and the capabilities in the region uh, and our abilities as allies and partners to work together uh, both for, uh, you know, defense against common threats, uh, but also for defense against, uh, you know, emergency responses for HADR for one of a potential natural disaster in the region. Uh, and it allows the forces to work together. Uh, to be able to start to develop those tactics, techniques, procedures, and to be able to understand what happens next. So the time to be uh, identifying how you do something is not after the problem. It's, it's to work on that front end. And so that's what these types of exercises build. Okay. Anything to add, Mark? Well, this could be difficult to follow um, Colonel Carlos. <laughs> um, I did make a, make a running joke back at uh, the MPC and the FPC um, that is difficult to speak because he essentially thinks along the same line, I think. But essentially, at the strategic level, um, it forges interoperability um, for regional states. Um, so we understand the various tactics, techniques, procedures at the tactical level. At the operational level, we operate under something called the CARICOM Task Force Headquarters. So regardless if Barbados Defense Force or Police, St. Lucia or Jamaica, we deploy to support each other under the RSS umbrella, or under the CARICOM umbrella. We fall under a CARICOM task force headquarters. At the operational level, we ensure that those officers can essentially harmonize their efforts to plan for operations so that the troops receiving whatever orders or plans um, have a product that has been streamlined by operational planners who essentially sing off the same hymn sheet. 
So that is very, very important at the strategic level, from government to government, is to build partnerships with our, our partners. Uh, we know that um, the U.S. is one of our biggest allies in the region, um, so it you know, reinforces that commitment to ensuring a zone of peace, to use the Prime Minister's words, to use the Prime Minister's words, uh, and to sure, ensure that you know, we can maintain a harmonized, um, harmonized efforts in you know, securing our Caribbean region. Okay, that's a nice segue into my next question. Um, as we know, the proverbial curtains will close on exercise trainings on May 16th. And now this to my mind right now is what's next? What happens after exercise trainings? What should we expect to see? Well, well, let me go first this time. Because uh, Colonel Carl is going to read my playbook. <laughs> so what's next for us? Um, so as I did mention, we, we, we transitioned from exercise trainings on the 16th, official closing. Um, seamlessly into ICC cricket World Cup just a few weeks after. Um, so next for the Barbados Defence Force and the region is ensuring that we have uh, persons return to the respective countries um, to ensure that the teams who are preparing to maintain a safe and secure environment are prepared and then redeploy back into theatre um, come 1st of June to ensure that the cricket games are safe. Um, so that is essentially next for, for us. But beyond ICC Cricket World Cup, obviously as you pay attention to one of the challenges we have in the region, which is the, the Haiti situation, uh, again after that we have to gear our minds to the next possible operation, which can be, could be for us uh, possible deployment to Haiti once the government of Barbados um, gives us the go ahead. So it's critical that um, we not only train here, but what do we take away from here can translate to any future operation, albeit HADR um, or any security related operation which uh, is on the horizon. Okay, well that's the Barbadian perspective. So for US Southcom. Well, I, I'm going first next time. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but it, it, excellent point is, you know, you're taking a training exercise and using it in an actual operational environment or in the case of the security aspects for the Cricket World Cup or for you know potential deployments to other hotspots in the region and so then I would also say that you know that is it segues into in July uh, we have the concept development conference for Tradewinds 25 uh, which will be held in uh, Trinidad Tobago and so it's a an ongoing process so it's not a one and done it's a, a regional annual commitment um, to working with the partners in the region and, and helping to build that common security Okay, so we know about the exercises. Um, members of the public have been sensitized as to what they could expect within their communities mm -hmm. during the period. But how do we measure what the officers and the participants are actually learning? Okay, so how do we measure that? So there is a regional observer advisory team um, who will be part of trading. So they're not role players, but they are persons to observe just to ensure that whatever standard operating procedures are written that we follow. Um, they not only look for what is going right, but they look for any gaps in the training or gaps in techniques procedures or gaps in the delivery of operations. Um, so that is how we measure um, how effective this exercise is. So once we come to the after action uh, meeting, which is June this year, uh, we can you know, essentially lay all the cards on the table and discuss what went right, what went wrong close those gaps, as the Colonel said, to ensure for Trade 2025, we continue to build on whatever shortcomings we may have picked up um, this year. So we continue to build uh, from exercise to exercise. Okay, um, well, this partnership here, I can see that this is something that is going to be fostered and growing over the years, and I'm sure that we're going to have U.S. Southcom working with closely with BDF in the future. So how are these efforts and partnerships managed and incorporated into our national policy? And how are they further developed? Oh, well, okay, well, um, <laughs> so again, how do they manage? Right, how, are, how do we manage these partnerships and how do we incorporate them into the national policy? And well, what, what it would say is that um, our relationship with Southcom goes very, very far, far back. Um, there are various programs that Southcom has, uh, initiatives um, that enables the Barbados Defense Force and the Barbados Police Service. Um, to build capacity. At the BDF level, uh, we have uh, whatever relationship we have with the United States, 
whereby we have funds um, that are given to support her training. Um, so those are ratified by whatever agreements that they are. At the, the national level, um, we signed various initiatives. So one that is coming up to look forward for is the Human Rights Initiative, which will be signed um, at the closing ceremony on the 16th of, of um, May. We would have signed another initiative on the front end of this, which is the ASK agreement, um, which allows us to not only trade services, but you know, goods for services as well. So at the strategic level, there are various policies and initiatives that are assigned to ensure that we continue to grow from strength to strength to strength. Okay. Mm. Well, and that ties in very well with uh, the previous of how do you measure what everyone learned. And so it is taking those, uh, those things that we learned, because the focus, is, it's great that things go well, uh, but the focus on that after action piece is really what, what could have been improved, what, what can we do better. And so that's how we learn those lessons integrate into and not just policies, but actual procedures of, uh, of how we do notifications, logistics movements, because logistics is the hard part, um, how those troop movements get moved and how people uh, interact and, and those relationships that are developed, especially on the interagency side, uh, you know, through a lot of the law enforcement pieces are, are critical as well. So those are focused on after the fact to make sure that we identify those gaps seems. So guys, do you have any final words for Barbadians and for the rest of the Caribbean as well as it pertains to exercise, exercise trainings? You know, um, remind them how important an exercise like this is to them and to their nation and the security of their nation and region. Well, I mean, it's, it's not just for Barbadians and it's not just for the U.S. As you said, it's for the entire region because um, no one does anything alone anymore. And I know that from the U.S. perspective, we certainly don't. We work uh, with our allies and partners uh, for every type of response. And so the opportunities to get more and more repetitions working together is wonderful. Um, I'd like to thank the BDF, uh, Commander Peterson in particular, and, and just the nation of Barbados for being such gracious hosts. So um, just to follow up on from what Colonel Carroll said, um, Admiral Ted, who was a former SOFCOM commander, said it takes a network to, to defeat a network. And as we look at the various geopolitical challenges worldwide, we have the Palestine-Israeli, we have the Venezuela-Guyana, we have you know, a few other conflicts and um, stressed areas across the world. Uh, we have to ensure that we are prepared within the region for any threat that may spill into our, our proverbial zone of peace. Um, if you look at what we're doing for trade winds, we would have done a threat analysis uh, to look at the most likely threats that may occur and the most dangerous threats that may occur, not only you know, under the transnational organized crime realm, but under the realm of you know, hostile large-scale sporting event. Uh, what are those most likely threats that occur, could, could occur would be you know, a peaceful protest, peaceful picket. But the most dangerous could be things of the nature of the likes of a hostage situation or active shooter, you know, someone who has a particular ideology who wishes to send a point or send a message. So we have to ensure that what we do um, can translate to safeguarding Barbados, safeguarding Barbadians. It may be some barriers to, you know, moving around um, as we exercise in particular areas, but it is all for a good cause. So Maybe some minor inconveniences, but be assured that whatever we do um, is to ensure that we can protect not only Barbados, but also um, the various um, countries within our network, um, given that we are under the rich security system umbrella, under the RSS umbrella, but then also under the, the more grand strategic umbrella, which is the U.S. Southern Command umbrella. A special thank you to Commander Mark Peterson of the Barbados Defense Force and Colonel Car Charles Carls from U.S. South Command for being here to tell us more about Exercise Trail Wings 2024. Remember, Exercise Trail Wings will be held in Barbados from May 4th to 16th. You can get more information on this exercise by visiting the social media pages of the Barbados Defense Force. They are on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.